night, and we did it in a morgue. We actually got a morgue in, in Oklahoma City. And I remember her coming in behind me, where the cameras were all lined up, and she came in and I thought, and I don't know what, for some reason, and the, the set was closed, there was a door closing the set, and I walked in right behind her, and it was the first time, and she broke down immediately. And she said, I know they're dolls, I know they're dolls, I know they're dolls, I know it's only dolls. And she just completely broke down, and every, for that whole night, she cried the whole night. And that scene where she shows the photograph of baby boy A, she, the minute she took the photograph out, even before, you know, she immediately started crying. So, yeah, people were very affected by it. I mean, we, you know, and a lot of the extras that came on the set, we had about 100 extras. People came from, like, from a long distance, people who felt compelled to be in the film. There's one woman in that scene who worked at Hearn's late-term abortion clinic in Boulder, Colorado, for 20 years. She's an extra. Um, she's a friend of mine now, Judy Wilkinson. I actually write about her in the book. Yeah. What happened to some of the nurses that were present when this was happening? Were they ever prosecuted? What, what nurses? Any of the people that worked in the clinic? Oh, yeah, none of them were nurses, though, you see. Uh, yeah, so all of them went to prison. All, they all went to prison, all of those girls. So, um... Yeah. Oh, no, they all went to prison. But they didn't go to prison for very long because they all cooperated. So, like, Adrian Moten, for example, who I've interviewed. I've interviewed most of them. Elizabeth Hampton. I mean, they're an extraordinary gallery of people. The, most of them have their background. Sherry West, um, Linda Williams. I mean, they're, they're, there's a chapter in the book which is called Willing Accomplices. So, yes, they all went to prison. One of, these are people, uh, Jim Wood put it very well. He said, these are people who you wouldn't let them mow your lawn. Um, these are people who would never get employed by anyone, ever. Not anywhere, anywhere, doing anything. Most of them had drug addiction issues, had been abused, alcoholism, um, you know, hepatitis C, mass depression, um, bipolar, that whole combination. All of them had, like, literally three or four of those things, each one of them. Um, Adrian Moten, who is one of the people who took the photograph, three people took a photograph of Baby Boyer, and I've interviewed Adrian Moten, and she's had, you know, she's had a conversion. She's, she's, you know, she's a new person. And that I, I really like, there's a very long description of Adrian Moten's story. Her story is, uh, you know, there's a, there, it seems pretty obvious. It's kind of obvious that she was having a relationship with, with Gosnell as well. And then, anyway, it's, long, it's a very, very long story. But she, she went to prison. And I kind of, you know, I was interviewing her. And, you know, when you're interviewing somebody, you know, you have to, you have to just... Anyway, I, I'm very interested in people, so I, I, had, I had this really good conversation with her. And I just said to her, you know, as, you know, person to person, I was going, God, it must be terrible to go to prison, you know. And she said, you know, she, she described it. So all the women from the clinic, they all went to prison. And they basically all arrived together. And all the other women, of course, you know, because this honor among thieves thing, all the other women started shouting abuse at them as they were brought into the prison. You know, you, you, you can imagine the language, right? You, you know, baby killing bitch and all that. That's the best of it. Right? The, the least of it, I should say. And I said to her, God, that must have been terrible. And she said, no, no, it doesn't bother me. She's been through the system. Um, and she's had a really, really rough life. And she said, uh, I said, well, what, did anything bother you? And she said, the dark. She didn't want them to turn the lights out because uh, she would see him. She would see him, she said. And I said, who, who did you see? And she said, I saw baby boy A. And all I could do was say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And she said, she, for, she still has nightmares and she always sees the baby. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, I love this. I love this. Okay, look at her leaving and she's gonna miss this great story. I know, I understand you got the, what the roast is on. But, um, so the girl, the girl who plays, the girl you see at the very last scene is the girl from the grand jury who, set, who changed her mind, right? And it's a true story. So during the grand jury testimony, the grand juries, you know who they are. They're like regular people knitting and whatever with their shopping and children and all that. And, they meet, and they're just amazing people. And, and both of the ADAs said that the grand jury were rock stars because they had to listen to the worst thing ever in forensic detail. And they had to think about it and think about it. So they had like over a year of this. They met for over a year. Um, and then this one witness turns up and they say to this witness, well, what happened to you? And the witness says, well, I was going there for an abortion, and it was a three-day procedure because she was um, quite far along. And so the first day, you know, they put, the, they put the things in. You guys know all that. So they put, the, you know, whatever, did the first thing the first day. And she said to Gosnell, well, what, what do they do with the babies? And he said, oh, we burn them. And she went home, and her cousin phoned Gosnell. And Gosnell says, I, you don't get your money back. I don't, I don't, you know, you're not getting your money back. 
and I don't do reversals. And uh, Christine Wexler said to this person on the stand, this is as true as God, I just love this story. Oh, and what happened then? And she said, oh, 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 my baby started kindergarten today. And for the first time in anyone's memory, all of the grand jury stood up and applauded. And it gets worse. It gets worse. So then we go to Oklahoma to shoot the film, and that actress we haven't found. And the director of the film is in an IHOP, and he meets a, girl, a woman, and he thinks, I like her. I like her for this role, right? And I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of funny because when you know, it's like sort of creepy that, you know, Hollywood, Hollywood director, hey, I want you in my movie. And she's going, yeah, really? Yeah, I bet. You want me to go up to your apartment as well and look at the script? You know, it's the sort of thing. And he said, no, I don't want you to come to my apartment. I'm going to come back to the script myself. So she comes down anyway. She decides to do this, right? And that's the girl that you see. So the film is never, films aren't shot in sequence. They're shot whatever way suits you for the money and whatever, right? So the last scene of the film is shot first, right? And I met her and I spent a lot, because you're hanging around the set all the time. And I'm chatting and chatting away with this girl. Um, and that's great. And then the second scene is the grand jury. And so she's there, the actress, and I'm there. And she says to me, oh my God, come here. I, I've just read the script. This is my story. And I said to her, oh God, right? So she says, I was having an abortion in Houston. And I'm, she, was lying, she had her clothes off and everything. She's lying up on the bench and a nurse came in and the nurse said to her, here, listen to your baby's heartbeat. I have to just go for a while. I just got to go here, but I'll, I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back. And she left her alone. Yeah. And the girl said, and I just put my clothes on. And I went back. I went out to the car and I said to my grandfather, I'm not killing my baby today. And y you know what I, yeah, so he got to see it. Unfortunately, we haven't got it today. My, I went out and told my husband, you can imagine, I'm on the set going. And my husband said, go back and ask her, would she talk to camera? And she does. And I can tell you, it's unbelievable, her interview. And she said in the interview, because when you interview somebody, this is a good one for you if you ever decide to get into movies. If you ever interview somebody, you ask a question, and when they finish speaking, don't say anything. Just leave them room, because they might say something else. So I asked her a few questions, and then I left her room, and she said, and he's five now. And at night, I, I, was, I lie awake, and I watch him sleep. And it's, um, she says something like, and it's amazing to me that I could have killed something so precious. It's just amazing, and she looked directly in the camera. But anyway, yeah, 